Hi, I'm Emma from Honey Buns Bakery in Dorset and thanks for joining us for another one of our gluten-free baking sessions. Today I'm taking a recipe from our cookbook number two, which is the all day cookbook. It's gluten-free, loads of vegan recipes and dairy-free recipes and we've got quite a few nut-free ones as well, which I'm doing today. So this recipe is really, really simple. We're doing two little demos today in one. So we're gonna start off with the Florentine mix and then I'm gonna add that to the posh porridge, which we're doing in a minute. So the Florentine mix is really, really versatile. It's nut-free, gluten-free, dairy-free, and it's vegan as well. And the reason that I wanted particularly today to show, because we're filming this at the beginning of October, is that we're gearing up here at Honey Buns um, for Christmas and getting all of our festive goodies, our ingredients in, so that we can trial new products and share them with you. And this is a brilliant addition to any bakes that you might be doing. It's essentially, you know when you get the Florentine cookies and they've got all of the beautiful bejeweled nuts, seeds and goodies in them, they're bound together with a syrupy, it's usually golden syrup or honey or something like that. Um, they're baked in the oven as a, as a biscuit style and then you dip them in dark chocolate. That's what a Florentine usually is. Sorry if I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but um, so we've deconstructed that idea, um, got the ingredients, taken the nuts out and replaced those with a variety of seeds and then made a kind of a, a, a bejeweled muesli is the best way of without the grains or the wheat. So all the good yummy bits in there. So that's basically what you'd have in a Florentine cookie pretty much. Um, and that's been pre-toasted in the oven and you can then add this to the posh porridge which we're going to show you you can have it um, sprinkled over your muesli to really pimp it up and make it deluxe but interestingly and this is what i thought about christmas is that you can add this to all manner of bakes so if you just lob this pre-toasted mix into your cookie your favorite cookie mix or biscuit mix or you can put it into loaf cakes, round cakes, anything you fancy really, even bread, because we've got some delicious recipes in the book for gluten-free sweet almond bread, superseded bread, and if you want to go sweet, then you can add this in as well. So it's really versatile. I have to be honest, I've just been eating it as it is. Um, so yeah, I, I did do another trade to show you, but I've eaten and so have the team. I've had a good peck on that. So <laughs> it really is yummy. It's like a kind of like a really lovely festive trail mix. That's the word I'm looking for. Right. So to do this, it couldn't be easier. Put your oven on, preheat your oven. You want it really nice and hot. You're not going to be, this doesn't take long to cook, but you do need a high heat. So 200 degrees Celsius is what you need. And you need a baking, um, you could do it on a baking sheet to be fair. I've just got a roasting tin tray baked tin something like that and what you're going to do is lob in first of all half a teaspoon of sea salt or generic salt this is just table salt to be to be honest with you 25 grams of pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds you've got 25 grams of each there okay if you prefer i mean any seeds will do i like these because you've got a little bit of you, you've got a bit of crunch to them and they're big enough that you can really bite into if you go much smaller something and nothing so linseeds for example i'm not sure would be quite the right thing um, then we've got one teaspoon of fennel seeds i love these it is personal taste i know they do kind of divide people though it's a bit marmitey they've got a really nice aniseed flavor to them you want a teaspoon of those okay if you don't like fennel you could try caraway if you don't like caraway vanilla pod something like that just for a little bit of extra flavor um, pine nuts next, 25 grams of these. These are ruinously expensive, <laughs> I do apologise. I don't know why they are. They're not, despite the name, they're not a nut, okay? So they are safe for nut um, allergy sufferers. Um, the reason that I'm including them, even though they are so darned expensive, is that they, they just have a flavour second to none, in my opinion. They're really buttery and rich. They remind me of a m m um, macadamia nuts, that kind of really lovely milky, nutty, um, texture and flavour that you get and they toast beautifully well so yeah hang the expense it's Christmas nearly um, and then orange oil I've got in the recipe which I'll be blogging I'll type you up a recipe so you don't have to remember all this um, one and a half teaspoons of orange oil normally what we would use in the bakery is something called boagian 
um, oil. This is from Morrison's. This is actually a lemon because he didn't have the orange, uh, which will, I'm sure, be fine. I've not used it before. You don't want an essence. You want an extract. Um, yeah, Sicilian lemon extract, the best by Morrison's. <laughs> what you need to be careful of, as always, is just to check that it is suitable for celiacs if, you're, if you are cooking and vegans, if you are um, preparing food for those two groups and dairy-free, obviously, as well. Um, it shouldn't have any contaminants and allergens in, but you just don't know how any of these extracts and other ingredients are processed and whether they're being processed in a factory alongside other ingredients and products that do contain the allergens. I hope that makes sense. So to clarify, you can use this um, and any other supermarket will do the same kind of thing. The Boagian stuff is amazing, but it is really, really expensive and it's getting increasingly difficult to get hold of. We use it in the bakery. They do orange oil, lemon oil. I think at the time of doing the video, you can still get it from Lakeland online, lakeland.co.uk. I will check this out and I will type up my recommendations for you in the blog. I'm not doing that today. I'm going to go off piste and use some Julienne style that's just the name for the shred there of orange zest we buy this in frozen uh, for one of our flapjacks and the mincemeat crumble um, in bulk but you can do your own um, make your own with with orange zest just chop up the orange zest and thickly grate it or peel it um, or you could finely zest a fresh orange if you wanted i don't know what one and a half teaspoons equates to the reason i like this more than the oil now um, is that you get a lovely vibrant colour and chunky texture. I think it works really, really well. You might be able to um, find pre-frozen stuff to buy ready done. And I will research that for you when I come to do the blog this afternoon and we'll be posting that um, later on this week. So I hope that makes sense. I haven't measured these out and I'm glancing down here because I haven't memorised the recipe. Um, 55 grams of naturally coloured glacé cherries. So you haven't got any nasty additives in there, any artificial colours or anything like that. These are increasingly easy to get hold of now in all supermarkets do them. And the same 55 grams of mixed candied peel as well. Um, keep an eye, like I say, on anything that's been processed. Um, keep an eye on the fact that it hasn't got any sneaky gluten contamination in there or and that it's suitable for vegans. I've left these in whole this time. Sometimes I break them up. It's just, yeah, I'm just going to experiment and see what they come out like whole. I think they'll be really pretty. And then add in 50 grams of dried cranberries. Goji berries would work really well as well. You get a similar colour pop and uh, you get that little bit of tartness that really works well with the rest of the ingredients that are, some of them are quite sweet, like the cherries, it works really well. And that is it. So just rub them all in. The salt is optional if you're watching your salt intake, but I love it. I love that slight salty tang you get along with the sweetness I think it works really well that is it obviously you can do more you can and um, if you've got the oven on anyway you can capitalize on that and do several of these trays at a time or in a session and it's only it only takes six minutes I'll show you the ones that I've done previous so these are I did these for five minutes just to show you and you can see if I kind of isolate a pine nut, you can see that that's toasted. That's your best guide, actually, because some of the seeds don't colour up as much, although the, fla the, the point of toasting them is obviously to release the flavour, and which intensifies and it's absolutely delicious. But you can't always tell um, because they don't always turn in colour. You can see the pumpkin seeds and the sunflower seeds haven't really turned, but you isolate a pine nut, you can tell. And then I did these guys for an extra minute. This is being really pedantic, but it shows you the difference. So that's another minute. So I did those for six. I love that. It's a really rich roasted flavour that you get from the whole mix with six minutes. But don't go any more than that because they will burn. That's right on the cusp there. And once they've burnt, they're horrible. They just go, they're just nasty and dry and really bitter. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Um, decant into a kiln jar, why not? And present that as a lovely prezi. It'll look bejeweled and beautiful. You could put a little luggage tag on there and a little bit of raffia or ribbon. Um, and it's a, yeah, just a really super easy thing to do with the kids on a snuggly, festive afternoon. And so welcome to the porridge making bit of this video. We've done the Florentine mix, the gorgeous Julie trail mix. We've got that on the side, ready to go. Um, you'll need that in a minute. And in the book, this posh porridge recipe is in here. Um, it does describe a very quick two minute bish bash bosh microwave method, but I have tried it on the hob as well and it works really well. So I can show you that also. It might take you three minutes, four minutes maybe. We'll find out. So 50 grams to start with of rolled porridge oats. They need to be, if you're obviously um, cooking for a celiac, or gluten intolerant person, you absolutely need to check that they are gluten free oats. Not all of them are. Quinoa flakes, 20 grams. Don't worry if you haven't got those. You don't actually need anything in addition. You can just pump up the oat content and buy another 20 grams if you want. 400 ml of coconut milk. I use the Blue Dragon brand, but any will do. And that's it. I'm going to Kind of my little trusty camping stove i'm going to reduce that down to medium heat and stir that around and it really is as simple as that why did i add the quinoa flakes just for interest um i think you get a really interesting texture they're a naturally free gluten-free pseudo grain they're not actually a grain they are classed as a pseudo grain uh, but you could use millet you could use rice flakes anything that takes your fancy that is safely gluten free because it, it just adds a, um, something different to the party just punks up the oats so this isn't a porridge for purists basically um, in the book I did add one and a half let me just check I think it was tablespoons yeah it was of sweetener um, something like maple syrup bearing in mind we're doing this vegan so you wouldn't be using honey but anything you know date syrup golden syrup uh, maple syrup would be great but I've tried it this porridge many a time and I've never felt the need to add the sweetener it's up to you um, and some Scots would say yuck add your salt but it's not my cup of tea really this is starting to thicken up nicely now you don't need to use coconut milk if you don't like the taste it does give a really creamy texture though um, you can use any plant-based milk almond milk, whatever, soya, whatever, oat milk, or anything that takes your fancy. Um, but this, oh, it's so yummy, I can smell it now. It's a really, really lovely porridge mix, so easy. And this serves too, generously, I would say. So that is thickening up, another minute, I don't know how long that's taken so far, probably two minutes. Don't boil it, just keep it a simmer. So I'm just gonna reduce that heat a little bit. Um, and then not forgetting the beautiful quarantine mix, we're going to sprinkle that on the top. Another missing ingredient from the original recipe, simply because I haven't got any in stock, are I suggested toasted coconut flakes as well that you could sprinkle on top. And then that would ping out the flavour of the coconut milk. I haven't got any, so that's no matter. I don't think you need them necessarily. And I will blog all of this, I will um, give you the text and I will also, because I gabbled along in the Florentine section of this video, I'm trying to keep it to a sensible length, I'm not going to go into all of the swapsy ideas and chatting you through the various different pseudo grains and gluten free flakes that you can use, I'm going to stick that all in the blog for you. So I'll do, I'll do my homework, as I always attempt to do, bring you as much information as I can about the pros and cons of various ingredients. And I hope that's helpful. And there, I think we're good to go. That I think is gorgeous. It will thicken up, it will continue to thicken up even after you've removed it from the heat, don't forget. Okay. And just as an aside, for any confusion with gluten-free oats, it is a bit of a minefield. Oats don't contain gluten in their natural state, in their uncontaminated state. They do contain a protein, adenine, which has a similar effect as gliadin, 
which is the troublesome part of gluten for those who can't tolerate it. And adenine can irritate in a similar way. So some celiacs can't even tolerate gluten-free oats. That is something to bear in mind. You've also got a contamination issue as well. I'll write about this in the blog and I'll make sure that my, because things change all the time, I'll make sure that my information is bang up to date for you on that. So there you go. So needless to say, if you're cooking for somebody who can't tolerate even gluten-free oats, then you could use other flakes and I will give you that info. Ah, that is fab. I want to eat this now. So and then just finish off with however much of this stuff that you would like. Oh, that's nice. So it's a little bit of a deluxe posh porridge. Thanks for watching.